This short video discusses air dispersion modelling, what it is, why it is necessary and the benefits. First, some basics. Imagine a factory with a chimney stack, often referred to as a stack or point source. The stack will emit pollutants, for example socks, knocks or particulates from a combustion process, or perhaps solvents from a coating process. The pollutants will generally rise from the stack and level out, sometimes as a visible cloud. The pollutants will then disperse over a wider area due to the wind and become less concentrated. At some point the pollutants will fall to the ground. The ground level concentration is made up of the background level and the pollution from the stack, often referred to as the process contribution. The background levels can be found from data recorded by local air monitoring stations. The process contribution away from the stack is diluted by distance and other factors. This concentration is calculated by the air dispersion model, taking into account these factors including weather and terrain. One of the purposes of an air dispersion model is to determine whether the ground level concentration is below the ambient air quality standards. These quality standards are set by the EU. The air dispersion model takes into account the effects of weather for example wind direction, precipitation, cloud cover, atmospheric temperature and geography. The height of the stack and of significant buildings are also taken into account. So why do we need an air dispersion model? Often an air dispersion model is necessary as part of an environmental impact statement where an organisation wishes to change processes on site often a model is required to show that there are no adverse impacts on the local air quality. An air dispersion model can be expensive. At least three years MET data is required. In addition, topographical data is required. A lot of computer processing then needs to be carried out and the results interpreted. An initial low cost screening model is often run as a first step. This model assumes the worst case weather conditions and makes a prediction without the need to buy MET data. If the results from the screening model are acceptable, then there is often no need to go to the expense of running an air dispersion model with full MET data. So what do you do if the results of the air dispersion model are not favourable? The most sustainable approach will be to change the process. Less sustainable options include installing abatement equipment such as bag filters for particulates or scrubbers for acids or alkalis. Probably the least sustainable option is to raise the stack height. This will disperse the pollutants over a wider area. Often coal-fired power stations have some of the highest stacks. Environmental efficiency uses screening models and also full-blown air dispersion modelers to undertake work for clients. These include Screen3 and AirMod. And our staff include consultants who are certified AirMod and CalPuff air dispersion modelers. So if stack emissions from your site may be a problem, we will be happy to talk to you. And if you are still watching a little bit about myself, I am Bob Sutcliffe, a Director of Environmental Efficiency. I'm a Chartered Engineer with significant experience in air emissions both in the UK and Ireland. I've previously worked on modelling power station emissions at the prestigious UK Warren Spring Laboratory and on automotive engine emissions.